So this is the editorial demo. This is the beginning of starting to understand what you can do in an editorial spread. This is part of your magazine four page spread. So if you do this part first, it'll help you think about different ways to create uh, a unique composition uh, within one page and then you'll do your final project with your final article as a four page two spreads. All right, so let's start. So you will get this document. You're going to have three different grids. Uh, I indicated rules and tasks for each of the grids for you to really explore uh, different size of type uh, using different typefaces. You will use the same typeface you have been using for the cards. I am planning on rectifying any issues that you might have with accessibility to a typeface. Uh, if you are being challenged uh, with the typefaces that you have been given, access to those, let me know immediately and we will adjust uh, what you need to use. All right. So look over this page, you'll see at the very beginning, again, you'll have three grids you'll be working on. All the instructions is on this page. Your, spread, your ultimate spread size will be 10 by 16 for this demo, which makes each of the pages 8 by 10. So the first thing is we're going to the essential classics have more of your workspace panels uh, that you'll be using. I have already set up a few of your pages for you. The first page on a printer spread is usually your cover and your last page on a printer spread, which is what we're looking at as a format, is your back cover. Since you're going to be working in spreads, I just want to see one and two being your first. And then if you look at the numbers here, four and five, which you'll add, and six and seven. So add, so adding additional pages is easy. Go to the bottom where you see three pages, two spreads, and then you can click on the create new page, which is that square, the plus, and just click it twice. So now you've got four or five and you're gonna need another spread. So now you have the three spreads. Next, we'll go back to the front cover, which is your instruction, six pages, three spreads and we were going to put a master grid or parent page on each one of these pages so two and three is going to have their own a parent four and five and six and seven so we only have right now visible a parent let's add b parent so you do that by going to the lines up here on the corner top right and then come down and go to new parent it'll automatically give you a new letter which is fine you're going to be doing two pages let's do one more parent c is good so now we have all three that relate to all three of these so all i need to do is select a and drop it on here, you should see the letter A in the corners of the pages, B and C. So that's just setting up your page. Again, you'll go back to the beginning. We will start putting in your guides and we'll lock your guides in your parent pages. All right, so we're gonna talk about the grid and then we're gonna talk about the task for two and three. This should just be repeated as you go through, but they're changing just a little bit of the information. So be aware that the grids and the tasks will change throughout pages. But if you know how to set up the first one, you should be able to follow through to the other tasks. Starting off, we wanna make sure that we open up our pages we can see that we have our parents set up and our pages set up still, and we're gonna select a parent. We're gonna hold shift so we get both of those, and we're gonna double click so that we're actually on that page. 
So I set this guide up with three rows when we need it to be four. So I'm gonna go to layers, I'm gonna do create guides, which will be our grid, and I'm gonna remove existing grid. So there's not always a grid there, but I had started beforehand and I wanted to change it up to four instead of three. So no rows, we're just gonna work on columns on this one, and we're gonna change it to four. We're staying within the margins, which I will discuss in a minute, and you can preview by clicking back and forth. If you're not seeing this background, you need to hit W. So if you hit W, it goes to the original view of a printed view. If you hit W back, you see the drafting view. So it shows your guides, it shows your bleeds, it shows your margins. So margin protects the gutter so that your copy doesn't fall into a place where someone can't read. And it also protects the edges so that any important copy will stay in the inside of that square, allowing it to be safe from any cuts. If it got cut a little short or anything, your copy, your important copy would always be safe within there. So we're gonna put a grid where we're gonna mainly put all the copy. Bleeds. Bleeds are very, very important. A lot of students don't understand what a bleed is. That's this red mark here. When you add a color background, I'm gonna fill this up with a color. If you do not have a bleed, it's more likely that you will get your image cut out like this because you did not provide an opportunity to have a full bleed for any cutting mistakes. If you put it right to the line, there's a potential that you will cut into the original paper and it'll leave you white. So always add a bleed to any work that is going to have a solid color or type or image edge. Anything that I do in parent will affect the connected parent. So once I start designing, I wanna make sure I'm back on the original page. So the only time you're in your parent spreads is when you're setting up your grids. Once you've done that, you need to come back to the main page. For the next part of this demo, you need to go on Canvas and download the editorial layout files. These files will have your article, which will have your header one, which is also the title, header two, which is the header, paragraph two, which is P2, which is the caption, Paragraph one and the majority of all your copy is your body copy. You also find a image that is black and white. So when you are asked to do only black and white, you have your black and white image and a colored image when you are asked to do color. So those are the three items that you need to do this demo. Adding of the copy and creating the content we're going to begin by adding all the copy and then we'll wrap it up by adding the image. We will start by building the paragraph style. Uh, as you can see, I've labeled them title, body, caption, and header, which also is located here on the instructions of how you're supposed to do that of the pages. Two to three should be using these tasks. You should be using a serif. You should be using uh, those sizes and letting for them. I'm gonna go through just this one and you are responsible for figuring out the rest. It is basically the same, the tasks will change on each page. So remember that for our pages, that first is just for information, which is now located on the side of my screen here for you. So I've already loaded these uh, images and copy and some of these I have completed and some I have not. So this shows you how creative you can be, but I do ask you to stay within the columns and 
guidelines. We spent all this time to build guides. I really want you to focus on how do you design within the limitations of staying within the guides. So I don't want to see stuff like that or stuff breaking through but not locking onto a guide. You got to use the, the guide to lock up all of your text boxes. This is a text box. This has its own text box. The image has its own. All of this needs to be locked in to the guide I provided you. So we're going to start on this one, which the first thing is that is black and white and it's a sans serif. So I've picked out my typeface is going to be Whitney for this. And I'm going to show you how to do some of these text blocks in a simple, more fluid way. And I'm also going to load the images. The rest, I just create a text box and put in the caption, the title, the header, and the caption. I got it from here, which should be an easy copy and paste. So I just copy it from here, command C, and then paste it in. And then my header, and I know it's the header because it's H2, and I already showed you in the video that it's H2 means the header, which is this size, and then body copy. So, but the body copy will take a little bit more because there's so much text we are going to still select all of the text and we're going to copy it. We're going to go to the text tool and create a text box. Now I'm going to command V all the copy in there. But I also have this little red box here and this red box has a little plus in it and that indicates there is more copy within this text box to my selection tool. I go back to my selection tool and I click on that red box. It's creating, as you can see, a paragraph of copy. I'm going to expand back out and I'm going to click pretty much anywhere. I'm going to grab that box. I'm going to drag it in to my guidelines and I see there's still more. So I click and I drag it out more. Remember this is our gutter and our margins are showing us that we don't want to put anything in here, uh, making sure that the copy is readable. We still have more, so we're going to move on to this page and we're going to create click. So this is threading all the copy into each one of these text boxes. It starts at the first one, it goes to this one, and then it goes to this one, and then goes here. The nice thing about this is that if you ever want to adjust your type, you're never losing it in a box because you cut it into pieces. All you need to do is just adjust it, your text box, and it'll flow into the next one. So if I want to align all these to be a little bit lower, I could and I haven't lost any type. It just flows into the next one gradually. And then I can add another one for here. Now I can make it smaller because there's not that much text left. I put in my caption and this is the header. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add paragraph styles. And the nice thing about adding paragraph styles is that it will set all the type. And if you're doing large documentations, it's fantastic. For one page, it might seem more time consuming, but I'm trying to teach you some of the steps that are important in setting up layouts, especially for editorials. So the next thing I want to do is I want to select all of the type by doing command A. And when I do that, I'll be able to go to my paragraph styles, which was already created right here. But I'm going to add a new one because I want to show you how to do that. Before I get too far, if you're not seeing the paragraph styles, you need to go up to type and click on paragraph styles. I'm making a new paragraph style and I'm going to call it one for page spread one body. And then I'm going to go to basic character format and I'm going to make sure it's Whitney. I'm going to change it to medium, which is 
closer to a readable text. And I'm going to make sure that I have the correct sizing that I asked for. So 9 and 12. So you want to change it the size here and the leading here if you have not already. Need you to do optical. Metric and optical all are about kerning. It's the space in between each one of the letters. And you know when we were doing the hand drawing that depending on what letter there is, the R and the K leaves this extra space. So optical corrects any complicated spacing to make it all look seamless. Metric is how the type designer designed uh, kerning. Tracking. For this one, I do not have any tracking. So I'm going to take the tracking back to zero. You might not have any tracking at all. Also, the case. I have all caps here. It should just be normal. And you can hit preview to see it. So you can see that all the type has changed. The other thing I'd like to do is change the tabs. You have basic, character, format, which is where we were, and then I moved down to tabs. And I prefer it being 225. I think that if you have too much of a spacing tab, it looks out of place and makes it harder for the reader to read. So you want to adjust that. Now, there are two options in adding paragraph styles. It's either a tab or you can add an additional space. But you cannot have both. So either you have this style or you have this style, but you cannot have both. The other thing is you do not tab at the beginning of the whole article. Tabs and paragraphs are a beginning of a new idea. When you're starting your article, it is the new idea. So the next one, which would be this one, we're going to make a new paragraph style is again, it is the first spread on my list. We'll go to character styles and we are looking at the title. So we're going to change this to 35 and 37. So 35 here, our size and 37 for our letting. We probably won't be using letting, but I like to give it an option just in case you want to break it up in a certain way. Optical is good. Make sure it's on optical and we're not adding any tracking. So that is for page two and three. And I didn't finish by saying it is title. Make sure you do label these. So a header could be used in different areas. A header could also be a little bit larger and be not the header of the author, but it could be a header that exists in front of each paragraph. It can be uh, a call out. So I'm using it, the header for the author's name. So I create a new style and this will be one because we're still on spread one and we're moving to the header. And then we're going to go here and we're going to use 25 and 27. So 25, you can't see when you do the pull down, you can just add it and 27. Optical is good, normal case, no tracking. So it is larger than what it was. And we have that little square in red saying there is some copy here, but it's not large enough to fit in the text box that's provided. So we'll open up this text box by grabbing the anchor points on the edge. So now we have the title and a header. All right. Next is next will be our caption. We'll go here, select a new paragraph style. We'll change the format. And for that, it's super small. So it's eight by 10. So we'll change this to eight by 10. Optical, no tracking. And before you do anything, you want to make sure you also label it correctly. So one, spread one, pages two and three captions. All right, so now all of your pieces have been established in the paragraph style. The next thing you do is bring in your art. So this one is black and white. So I'm going to go and bring in my black and white photo. Now you have creative freedom. I just want you to really explore how creative you can be by using the grids. 
And you can also see I am going over the gutter, which is the pages that are in between the fold, but that's okay, especially for images that are very decorative. And I wanna make sure I keep the caption very close to the illustration. I know there's a lot of fun things that you could try to do. I would ask you to try not to just do a standard two column, be creative with your ideas. Spend some time with this and come up with a unique, unique way of making everything fit. Something that we didn't cover in class enough, which is how to create wrapped text. And that's under window and you should be able to find wrapped text. Pop up. And if I wanna make the image wrap around the text, then I can add a wrap around bounding box. And unless there's enough text, it won't wrap around so cleanly. We would have to have it larger. So here's, yes, it is a two column, but because I'm breaking it with the box, it's more interesting. And I might want to bring down this lower because I do want some copy on the bottom. And then staying with the margin, could I play around with the titling? Who knows? Get creative. So when we get back here, when you go to wrap, um, text wrap, you can add, see how this is really close to the image? To make it look a little bit cleaner, you can add a little buffer. See how there's a little bit of space now around the edge. So it has a clean look. The text has space around it. Now this could come closer to the copy. If this is missing, make sure you grab the missing copy. One thing you should know about images when you bring it into InDesign, they are already masked into a box. So in Illustrator, remember when we had a box and we masked out the image? In InDesign, there is always a box. It is always masked. So if you wanted to move the size of the whole thing, you have to make sure you're on free form. The whole image is getting smaller as I scale down. Another way to change the image is hover. You'll see this uh, circle, click on it until you see the image, and then you can hold shift and drag it out to fit. But it's always in a box. It is always masked. I want you to stay within the grid, line things up to the grid. So good luck 